dear friends welcome to this particular session uh, we will talk about a specific problem today uh, we will talk about bit fields so let's look into this particular problem uh, code line by line so we have a structure here you can see there are two uh, fields that we are using f1 and f2 and since we have a qualifier here you know we are looking into bit fields actually right so the first f1 is a three bit field and the f2 is a just one bit field we are doing one assignment operation to it 5 comma 1 and then we'll try to display the values uh, whatever is stored in this particular structure as a bit field we will also try to deduce and arrive at the solution right we will try to also see the size of this entire structure as uh, memory allocated by the compiler so as usual my request uh, to you is to pause the video for for few seconds or a minute analyze the code try to see how a compiler or how the system will represent this structure in memory and how the data is going to be stored and then you should note down your uh, answers here okay uh, important thing to remember in this exercise will be uh, you have to just uh, see that uh, how the data gets stored in memory that is very important right and what role uh, what role these uh, representations like integers and unsigned integer uh, will play uh, in in your answer as you have seen in a lot of my videos and advanced C series also, I talk a lot about data types uh, because they are fundamentals and we need to understand how, how we represent the data in memory and how compiler treats them as part of our way of solving the problem. So we will also uh, try to get the answer for size of. So I hope uh, you have already noted down the answers. So let's go into the lab exercise. Uh, I'm going to run this code, compile it, run it, and then I will explain it uh, with a memory diagram about, you know, how things are. All right, so let's go uh, into the lab now. So I'm in the lab and uh, let's look into the code, right? Okay, so here you can see you have a code base here where we have done the entire coding. I am going to compile this now. Okay, so it's a p6.c and we have an a dot out. So watch out for your answers now. All right. So what you see is for the first one, right? So we have assigned a value of five, but the system uh, or the system is printing minus three, right? Okay. Second one, we have assigned a value of one and it is happily printing it as one. And the last one, what should be the size of this particular X, which is a structure type, right? So you can see that when you talk about structures, right? Basically, uh, there are two uh, members in this. Uh, we have uh, two fields, F1 and F2, but they are bit fields, right? So compiler will do some additional magic here. Uh, the compiler will try to allocate the space from whatever minimum possible area, actually, okay? So some of you might think that it is going to be a bigger answer than four, right? So people sometimes think it may be like four and then maybe four because there are two integers. So the answer can be eight. That's what people will think. That may be true for a general structure uh, memory allocation. However, when you talk about bit fields, compiler will try to, you know, look into the bitwise, bit operation, sorry, the bit fields actually, okay? The width of the types or the fields. So here now it is getting fitted into a, integer itself right so first we will try to understand uh, why the answer is minus three why the answer is one and then why the answer is four so i will draw one diagram now uh, so that it is easy for us to understand i will come back into this lab little more for some more tidbits okay so let's look into a diagrammatic uh, representation of this memory actually okay so if you see if you see that uh, I'm, I'm going to draw basically one memory area so that memory area is going to be slightly bigger and pardon me for my uh, diagram sometimes it does not look as good as expected but uh, it uh, captures the gist and some right so I'm creating a memory area you can see here this memory area is basically a uh, 32 bit which is nothing but a size of it so it's a 32 bits memory area and uh, since i'm drawing a diagram for you right basically just remember that uh, in our assignment uh, we had uh, bit fields okay so i'm just trying to draw 32 bits and you can assume that each one of these is basically a 8 bits or one byte location right so basically it's like a one byte that's what i'm trying to convey here it's a one byte okay 
so this is first one this is the second third one and fourth one now the idea is uh, as you know it is lsb right so i'm trying trying to draw a diagram uh, not in terms of uh, what computer we see but in terms of what we understand actually right okay now uh, this is what we we are seeing here right now okay since we are talking about width fields uh, i think i should break it further down now it might look little weird you know but uh, you should uh, enlarge your screen to read it more properly in case you are seeing it in your mobile or you know laptop right so so we have so many fields here actually okay so i have broken down uh, i have, you can see that i have broken down this area let's uh, look into the code okay once again so the code says the f1 right we are interested in f1 with a 3 bit and we are interested in f2 with 1 bit actually okay so let's look into the memory now so uh, what i will do is i will take some another color so that it is easy for us to see things okay now we are talking about f1 and f2 as our code actually right so we are looking into three so these are the three ones right so these three positions i repeat this area basically represents your field one that's what we have said okay so that's how it will be in memory now this is least significant i am looking into that area right and this is most significant but uh, memory starts from least significant right okay similarly when you're looking into the f2 f2 is a single bit so this entire area right it's a very difficult to draw here so i will say it's an f2 and that's pretty much it actually right so when you say it's 101 so what we are doing is we are writing uh, 5 okay so let's look into that so what you have is the first one was 5 actually right okay so when you say 5 uh, let me take this code here uh, we have um, assignment operation so f1 we are doing 5 and f2 we are doing 1 okay so to understand it better uh, let me try to write something in this area f1 and f2 correct okay. so when you're talking about f1 as a field we say we are talking about uh, bits right basically so when you convert it into binary notation uh, it is nothing but uh, 101 that's what we call it and f2 is a single bit operation single bit right so it's just a one because the value we assigned as one so the problem or the question here is how do we store them right okay so when you look into this memory area actually right so 101 so we can like you know, we are storing like this 101 that is for f1 f2 is pretty straightforward it is this okay so that's how we represent in memory one exercise for you who are still watching this video right basically is just to understand what, what compiler tries to put in these areas but uh, whatever you find out here uh, don't uh, scratch your head why it is like this compilers are compilers so sometimes we have to respect them right the implementation of how they implement it as a programmer we should be worried about what we have coded i repeat as a programmer we have to worry about what we have coded we are only interested in four bits three plus one four okay now a lot of people so I, I have given some explanation okay people might have doubt you know that integer is a 32 bit and other integer is a 32 bit so your doubt is valid right okay now you you, you know that uh, when you did a size of what the size of represent size of represents the size of the memory which is allocated by the operand right the size of that so when you see it's a structure so compiler says it's four four bytes it's a four bytes of data okay space so when you say four bytes so this both are getting compacted back to back i repeat it's back to back so uh, the diagram that you see here has a lot of learning here okay so the three bits we are taking here and the one bit we are not skipping and go to another byte actually okay so we are just back to back here and i'm doing in this order because that is easy for me to represent in a in a table actually in a in a, in a diagram right so that's how it will be uh, so now the question is why we did not get five right that is very important actually why we did not get five why we got minus one actually right okay so i think sometimes it is funny because uh, uh, we, we we assigned a value of five here and we have to also respect the sign here right okay what is f1 f1 is an integer okay so when you talk about a signed entity for that signed entity memory regions the most significant bit position will represent a sign right when it represents a sign in reality what happens is if i think you are getting the idea when, when this represents this is even looking at this there's a three bit position right so this guy is a sign actually isn't it so 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 what you see here is basically this this area 
this area is your sign okay so essentially what do you are what are you left out with you are left out with these two so when this represents a sign this what is this value this value has to be something else right basically so when you talk about the this value let's 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 go back okay we will just try to calculate this value okay so what is this value 101 let's come back into and then i will just try to you know open it up our program itself and then give you some data point right okay so when you say 101 uh, as a sign representation where uh, this is a sign actually right okay it is nothing but this is equal to uh, minus 4 plus 1 which is nothing but minus 3 why it is minus 4 because 2 to the power 0 2 to the power 1 and then this 2 to the power 2 so since it is a sign it is minus 2 to the power 2 okay minus of 2 to the power 2 this is one shortcut right some of you might have studied uh, uh, two's complement notation right so i think you can use two's complement notation also to get into these values and there are some shortcuts out of practice you can always you know uh, see that so i have already told you one shortcut whenever you have a sign bit take that particular position and then do 2 to the power n where n is that position so 2 to the power 0 and then 2 to the power 1 and 2 to the power 2 so it's 2 to the power 2 and then multiply by minus 1 so that becomes minus 4 and then convert all of the other things into the respective 2 to the power you know uh, position notation so this is obviously 2 to the power 1 into 0 and 2 to the power 0 into 1 so that's what it is and minus 3 so I think that's where the answer is. The answer is minus three because of only the sign thing. Okay. Now, and one other quick thing is uh, this is an unsigned, right? So we just we are looking at one bit and we say that bit is basically storing a value, not a sign. Okay, it's just a single bit. Okay. So we are storing a value one there. If we store a value one there and it's a value and we say that it's an unsigned, so there's nothing like a bit position reserved for a sign. So it just simply displays one here okay just to make it more clear suppose suppose we remove this guy right so now this is interesting f2 is very interesting because when you say f2 colon 1 we are saying that we want to keep one bit position but that position will represent a sign okay and it, if it represents a sign it, there is no way to store a value right so if i do a one here you want to store a value of one but you are saying you're signing that value one but that's a sign and then one one means minus negative right so it's simply minus one okay so when you when you this when you run like this this will be minus one because you have re removed the sign okay so when you do a dot out you what you get is you get a um, minus three as i discussed and you get a minus one here because you you remove that uh, unsigned you're saying that now i require a one bit position for a sign and there's only one bit right so that's how it is okay so as a programmer we have to be really worried about our way of treating a memory location as a signed and an unsigned entity i think that's the summary second thing in bit fields is bit field is more like compression of the memory so compiler you are saying i want fields okay i want i don't want an entire byte location i want a portion of a byte right so the compiler is using you know whatever way possible to give you the data back to back you know three bits for f1 and then immediately following that one bit for f2 okay i think that's it for this short video um, i will uh, see you with some more complexities you know and some some shortcuts in similar videos okay around bit fields uh, in one of the future uh, interactions thank you very much bye for now